My name is Dr. Julia Shaw and I'm here at the CLO Connect Conference in London and today I'm giving a talk on why we misremember things. So in particular I like to call this memory hacking, sort of where we get things wrong and also how we can make our memories better, how we can make things more memorable. And I think that there are, lo there are lots of misconceptions about how and why we remember stuff. And as educators or people who are interested in learning and technology, I think it's really important to realize, for example, that obviously repeating something over and over and over again, which is one way that a lot of people try to memorize stuff, just doesn't really work. Um, and it all has to do with how our brain fits together and how your memory is really this network and you want to harness and make as big of a network as possible. Um, and so you want to do things like like, like make things weird. You want to come up with examples and connections between things that maybe don't exist in reality, but that can stick out in your brain and make this big fat memory network that you can access later. Um, so I'll be talking a bit about that and I'll be talking about how um, you can chunk things, so how we sort of parse information into smaller pieces to make them stick better because for example, you need to remember a string of numbers or you need to remember a bunch of foreign words that you've never heard before. How do you make them into meaningful pieces of information that stick together that we can remember better later? So that's what we'll be talking about. And then there's this key piece of misinformation, which is what my research really focuses on. They're also called false memories. So when someone gives you something that's wrong or you give them something that's wrong in terms of information, misinformation, um, then that can become a false memory. So you can think that you did or learn something that you didn't. And so I think learning how the brain and how memory makes errors can really give us a lot of understanding as to how we learn in general. And so realizing why are you mistaking Ed with Sue or why are you repeatedly getting the number wrong, sort of consistently wrong, is I think as interesting a question as why can't you remember it at all or why have you forgotten it? And so understanding these mistakes, understanding distortions, um, can teach us a lot about how these, these neural networks, these brain networks work and how what the brain does is it takes sort of a piece from over here and a piece from over there, and it recombines them and sometimes in ways that never happened. And so what you want to do is make the network strongest for the things that are important, for the concepts that are core, that are related, and we'll be having fun with that and practicing it with word lists and different kind of grocery lists to see how do you make things that don't seem to seemingly are totally unrelated, how do you make them sort of make sense together and how can you animate them, how can you illustrate them to make them more memorable. So my research focuses on convincing people that they did things or saw things that they never experienced. Um, so they're called false memories, and in particular I enjoy um, exploring complex autobiographical memories. In other words, the memories that sort of form our identity, that make us who we are. And this has relevance to everything from school situations, sort of kindergarten, and how do we remember experiences, and how can that tie in with our memory in general, and our learning in general. And it can also go up to sort of the criminal justice system. So when people misremember, eyewitnesses, for example, why can you point at an innocent man and say that's the guy who did it, um, when it's clearly just a false memory. And so I explore these kinds of things in my research, um, sort of from the everyday mundane, I think you, the keys are definitely by the door, they're obviously not because they're not there, um, all the way up to these really extreme sort of murder uh, false memories. And the research I'm working on right now is looking at really extensive case files and seeing just how creative these memories can get in really high stakes situations um, that are legally relevant. So my research really kind of goes in that direction, it explores eyewitnesses, it explores um, memory at its most critical and how we can get police to ask better questions and how we can get more reliable information and memory out of people in general. False memories play a role in corporate and sort of um, organizational structures as well as in the legal system and other things. Um, and I, I see this all the time where people will argue about, you know, I remember you promised me this or you said this the other day. And the person's going, no, but I said something totally different. And you're thinking, why is this person lying to me? And I think this is one of the, probably the biggest take home messages of my research and sort of cognitive memory science in general, is that sometimes people can misremember with a high level of detail and vividness and confidence these things that, that didn't take place. And that can be personally relevant, that can be relevant for the entire structure of an organization. Um, something else for, for structure I think is important is that 
you know, these memos go out or, or critical decision making kind of flow charts go out to say, you know, these are the things we need to do in these critical moments or this is how a meeting should go. And they come into your inbox and the next day, the next moment almost, they're often forgotten. So this, they become this forgotten, irrelevant piece that someone worked probably a long time on to create um, because they're just not memorable. And so by creating um, call-outs, by creating handouts, by creating information in a way that's structured and visualized and, and created in a way that's in adherence to how we understand memory science, it's going to make it more likely to have an impact in organizations. It's going to make businesses more effective and more fluid. And it's going to make people remember important information better. So three top tips for making things more memorable. I'd say step one is uh, make it weird. So try and think about associations or relationships or pictures or feelings or anything you can, can use. So multi-sensory, try to use your smells, your, your visual, your whatever senses um, to make something that's really weird and really sticks out in your mind um, for anything you're trying to remember. The other thing is don't repeat over and over and over again information instead. Try to make it meaningful. So it's not just about making it weird, but making it meaningfully weird. And then third, uh, write it down. Uh, we overestimate what's called a prospect of memory, which is our, uh, our assessment of, I'll remember that later. I, mean, I don't need to write that down, I'll remember it later. And so instead of, in that moment, I want you to think of me and go, actually, I'm probably overestimating this, I should write it down. Because your memory is never going to be as good as in this moment.